All right. Once you get that point on top, you got a seal you can remove all by pulling on them. This one has a, a few little things, a few little tangs, and uh, it comes off. You just pry it off, and it's going to be a, a ring. See, there's a metal ring here around. We're going to have to need. We're going to need that, and then there's a cap. Uh, it says Irisher on it, so before you open it, we're going to remove the uh, res residual safety valve and uh, just in case there's air in it. Uh, this one, I'm pretty sure there's there's not much in it because it's broken, but uh, if you were to do this on one that still holds a, a decent charge because it's not completely blown out, uh, it's a good practice to remove that guy here. And they changed the thing where this one, uh, this one clips. So I'm just gonna go with a vice grip and remove it. I've got other ones that cannot go in its place if it's too mangled, but uh, I think it'll, I think it'll be fine. So I'll remove that one. I'll uh, that will uh, depressurize the whole system. In the air left, nothing. It's dead. Right here. Now oh, there's no pressure left. And now we know we're gonna go and have fun and uh, fill that full of a uh, PB blaster and uh, mess with it until it comes off. All right, this this one was pretty rusted, but uh, yeah, pry bar, you just move it a bit around, and eventually you get the ring off with one. And now more, uh, more creepy scraping. Let's get the cap off. Uh, starting to move. Now oh, this one is rusted. I mean, really. Yeah, there we go. Get that cap off. And now we have access to this ring, the seal, and that nut. It's gonna be easier to get on that nut now. Uh, the best thing is a open wrench, a open uh, 18 millimeter wrench. And just zip it out with an impact. This is a tool I made to remove that nut. It's an 18 millimeter, and it just cut one of the uh, side of the uh, hexagon. So it can fit in there and it's not going to damage the wire as long as it doesn't start spinning like crazy. But uh, usually once it's it's free, it's free. And then you can just do it a little little by little using the uh, the nut here. And it's fine. So you just, you just got to watch out for this cable. Don't want to break. Alright. That nut is off. And we're gonna have to unpin the connector here, pull everything out. But now this should be free. Then we have access to the other nuts underneath here. All right. Now we have another screw clip right here. Then I need to pull out. Yep, those are not fun. So, I was able to get it out, but uh, yeah, it's gonna take some time. There we go. One more ring. I don't know why they went to this design. I mean, it's uh, vastly more complex and annoying to take out. So. Our seal.
I'm gonna need to reuse the seal so I'm re I remove the circ clip now removing the seal from this thing which is held on this little thing that kind of uh, mashes the seal here I guess the rod of the damper but I need to remove everything so whatever works first for you guys I mean as long as I take it off then with a set of these you can unlock the connectors and then fish everything through you have to remove everything that's on it so Gotta be careful with it. Boot. Nut. The top plate. Little collar. Then we have to move this thing over that knob here, which is easier said than done. But yeah. That should be good. This is the actual seal and it's not uh, replaceable. So if you mess this seal up, it's gonna cost you uh, a whole thing. Because of course, they, uh, they've not made it available. And we need aftermarket to solve this. Every time, ow. There it goes. So you see, I just unlocked it from one side, and then uh, it was good. Now we have to undo the other one here. Up here, this this one here comes with the seal, so it's not too bad. I put a bit of glue. Come on. Don't care about the sleeve here. This all gets replaced with a new one. All I want is to pull the damper through without damaging the wires or the seal on top. So.
You have an each spray this way, so. There we go. Got the boot, the seal. Now I can pull the whole thing through. There it is. my oil that's good yeah that's all the crap I shot in this thing to get it loose it's not actually leaking they're pretty good for that we have a new seal for here this one is not gonna be good it's all distended you see once you pull those out it just it's just dead so. Eventually, it's gonna come out. I mean, this cap, this seal is the worst offender. If you did not need to remove that one, so it would be a lot easier. But they are not available. So, uh, this saves you three grand doing this, so, especially worth it. super careful I hate going underneath but sometimes they're really stuck and uh, I gotta walk it so I gotta go to the end fall back just shy then you can sometimes move it this one is pretty stuck that side especially on the side here it, uh, it moves I don't know why the other side doesn't want to come, but uh, it's a fine. Oh, there it is. It's starting. Yes, I'm, uh, I am aware that I'm pushing the other side in. That's okay. That's why I put a lot of a PL100. Everything starts sliding together nicely. And then I can go in here with my hammer. Get out of there. Every time I move it, some PL100 goes underneath, which is a lubricant. One of the best lubricant gets in there and it helps slide. So, yes, this bag was old, it's uh, 11 years old and it needed replacing, but uh, the actual problem with this car because this guy uh, 
this guy came to me before because of a bad sensor and I just had to tell him like well you gotta replace it or you're gonna have problems and oh yeah well the bag blew up see this arm is not even straight anymore and even if I wanted to move it it's stuck the sensor is totally frozen it's like super stiff so I bought a newer r not unit and it'll, it'll replace this because I'm not putting a bag on it with a, a bad sensor it's gonna clear all the faults and it'll be uh, yeah, just like new but uh, yeah this is stupid and this is this is something that right to repair needs to address and hopefully they will address it uh, replacing the, the complete assembly of a unit is it, I mean it's not acceptable the damper can be are different on all cars and you can replace the damper and not the spring and it should be the same case with this but if you call the OD they're gonna sell you the whole unit and in Canada in the US they want uh, uh, I think it was nineteen hundred dollars, but uh, in Canada they want they want uh, three thousand and six hundred dollars for these for uh, the assembly the strut with this thing. It, it they say it's not serviceable. Yep, it's not serviceable. What I'm doing is impossible. So, right to repair needs to address this and force the manufacturers to actually sell the, the actual parts like this seal. I want to buy this one. I would buy it. Even if it's thirty dollars, forty dollars, I'd still buy it just for peace of mind. Even though this one is fine, but uh, yeah. So, got my new, uh, my shiny new one here. I've had good luck with these. I mean, I don't. It's not made in the U.S. Obviously, but uh, I mean, I've had good luck with these. I mean, I'm, I've been running these uh, for four years on one of my car, which is uh, which is over there and uh i mean i put i put a lot of miles and a lot of harsh harsh winters on it and they seem fine and i've got those on on many other clients car all right i got my seal here and it's looking very very good i'm happy with what i'm with what i'm seeing other than the uh, coating of rust this is to be expected uh, in this area so yeah, that's the seal. I would really like to buy it. We'll uh, we'll see. I'll take the numbers on it. I'll contact the company who made those, uh, and see uh, see what they say. What what they have to say about this? Because this is something right to repair needs to address. This is also something right to repair needs to address. Because if you go to the dealership, they will not sell you this uh, uh, this bag here. This is this is not something they're gonna sell you. They're gonna tell you that it's a non-serviceable part. They're gonna tell you there's high pressure in there, even though it's a air spring. So I think on one of these caps, it says uh, high pressure. Well, there's no pressure if you relieve the pressure inside. And the damper, the damper, I mean, on these cars, they last a long time. My car over there has, uh, has passed over the 350,000 miles. It's got five, 564,000 kilometers. And it's fine. I mean, it still has original dampers on, on all the wheels except the uh, left rear here, the left uh, front, because it was replaced at the dealership at 40,000 kilometers, so at 30,000 miles. So there was a, there was obviously a problem with uh, uh, with assembly when the car was new. But other than that, all the, all the dampers. I mean, I mean, this is still good. This is very very good indeed. So there's no need to replace this. The so right to repair needs to address this and this is why you need to support it. Because I would really like to go to OD and buy this part and have them made a few baller, a few dollars off of me. And I would buy this these uh, in bulk. So when I replace the bag I could put it back and only replace the spring. This is the spring. This is the equivalent of the spring. This is the damper. So the shock absorber damper in the spring it's it's usually replaceable on a car uh, independent of each other but not on these uh not on these cars uh well not for the dealer so what uh, so it's uh it's a no serviceable not serviceable part it cannot be taken apart and uh, yes yeah, so what i'm doing right now is actually impossible i'm doing the impossible and i'm saving a lot of money so we're gonna put all that back together and then uh We'll clear the codes and the car will be running just fine again. Alright, reassembly. I have a new O-ring here. And this is slightly smaller than this. So I'll go through here. So I'll remove the pump stop. I'll go through here.
I always try to remove it a little bit so that the uh, distress is removed because when you roll it sometimes it's twisted now I got my new 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 ring here I can put back the bump stop then from here yeah I either do I do either put it inside the bag or I put the uh, top seals and I think putting top seal now uh, it's gonna be uh, better So the seal goes like so, and then C clip goes back on top. So I'll clean everything up. Okay, I'll be using some sealant because not only it's a sealant but it's going to lubricate it and it's going to before it dries it's kind of a lubricant so it's going to help push this thing back in and this is not dirt it's just the strand because this is woven material it's like a reinforced rubber uh, it's real good but um, I've taken the numbers on it so yeah there's there's more here NBR CFW a1 but the rest of them I've got the uh, part number so eventually if we need one uh, I'll be able to source something or I might have to call the manufacturers of Dempa Satch so I'll just put a little dab of this here okay. And this holds cool. It's also a gasket material, so. Here. Now. Pop that in all the way at the bottom. See the groove is not all the way at the bottom. The groove is slightly higher, so I don't know why they've not made it flush, but it was it's just the way it was in the old one. So it was not pushed all the way in. Maybe you could just pull it out a little bit more. I think that's what I'll do. I'll uh, I'll raise it back up afterwards just so it doesn't move once it's installed the spring is easy to put in but this is hard to remove really really hard to remove all right it's all the way in all right I'm gonna get some tools all right there it is it's not all the way in a groove I gotta lift it back up a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. You heard it click, you saw it move. Mm. 
I'm gonna be really careful with this. As long as you slip towards the metal, you're good. But if you slip towards the rubber, you're in a whole world of hurt because that's gonna cost three thousand dollars more. That needs to go up a little bit from here. So, Seems pretty good. This is how I want it on that side, but then when I move the other side, it's always a bit tricky. Yep, it's seated. Okay, now that it's seated, using these tubes, this is air hoses for uh, industrial application. You'll see why. So put those in here. There we go. I can hook it up on this right there on the stud so it doesn't move and then we go down and I can use uh, uh, I think I'm, I'm better off doing the opposite yeah ah darn it darn it darn it it moved I just want to avoid putting a tie wrap on this. There we go. We got this. Flip it there. There we go. And these are exactly the right size to hook up. Not on the pin, but on the uh, the keeper of those wires, so it's perfect. And it'll help me guide the whole thing in, like so. Of course, now the uh, yeah my sleeve. I should get my sleeve out first. Okay, all right. Just want to prevent a sleep from go going back in. So. so I'll flip this around. There we go. This is the pieces that meets with the rubber and the lower seal. So wherever there's a O ring, it needs to be lube. go right in there and uh, not cause any problem don't want to bind up the o-ring and have to find another one all 
Alright, this is looped up. I can pull the wires through. And I have to fish it through and hold on to this. Because if it goes back in, I'll never be able to inflate those. Oh, my wire is already out on the other side, that's good. Here comes the shaft. Okay, now what I'm doing is holding on to this and I need to push it through into the groove. Like, oh, I got, I had it. There you go, it's in. Now, this stays like so because I need to put in locking collar, the top plate and all that stuff. Why? Because if I push on this, uh, the strength of the shock is going to tear apart the seal here. So I need to assemble this because this will keep uh, this from happening. It will keep this, this seal from being uh, pushed outside. So what I do Got to put in all the, all the new stuff in there. We need this. This kind of uh, compresses the seal around here. And we need uh, I'm gonna put in a little bit of lube. Because I'm very gentle with everything that's on the O-ring. So if I do this should be able to squeeze it on there it is perfect no I must not lose track I think this yeah this goes here this is basically your top plate it has no markings whatsoever so don't worry about it We have we have the nut. This is just a cap that goes on top. Uh, so let's go put this here. And now I need a very small wrench and a 19 just to snug it up. Use the impact afterwards to make sure it's really seated in there. But it's not it's not hard to assemble as you can see. It's just hard to take apart. So no user serviceable parts, my ass. Hmm. Now I can hold it using only one part, like so, and we can put the rest of the stuff on, like the cap and the ring. These have seen better days, but uh, they'll stay. Can you see the number? Someone manufactures these. BMG. I just saw something. BMG written here. And R with a part number 700 something. Huh. Different markings on the need. Now so we need this to hold it. And we need to see where it goes. So if you don't remember where it goes, here's your clue. You need those tabs right there. Wires goes here into the channel and into the plug here. This is how it goes. This is exactly how it goes. 
I'll even clip this one in. Made extra sure. Yeah, that's good. Yep, looks fine. I'm gonna loop this guy. It's already pretty rusted, but uh, it'll last. I'll even put some uh, rust proofing on top of all this. I'm not done torquing that knot though, because I want this to hold together before I do. Now this this holds everything as well as the shaft so now I'm happy with this but mm, yeah I'm gonna have to turn it I'm gonna have to turn it so I'm not rebending the wire even though it doesn't really matter because it's gonna work anyway either way but I don't like this so I'm gonna change it This looks right, maybe a bit less. Now I'm gonna go this way because when I torque it down with the impact, it's gonna move a little bit. It's just me being picky, really. Really all you need because this is a three quarter wood so uh, don't go crazy you'll snap it off all right good all right 
that's all we adjusted. See, it fits pretty nice. So now we have the cap that holds the wires and that little seal. Just a matter of putting it back together. See the rust. Before we do that, though, we're gonna some lanolin base rust proofing. So we'll keep the rust away as long as we want. And this clips here. There you go, it's reassembled. We need a little clip. This goes on top and keeps the, the wire nice. And it goes all the way down to the stud. There we go. Clip here. Ah. Hi. Bye, sister. Yeah. So now, only thing left to do is drop it on the ground. All right. So here it, here it is. So there it is. All that's left to do is reassemble my connector here. This one is a little bit broken. I don't know why, but maybe, I don't know, something happened. Maybe I broke it, but uh, either way, I'm gonna put a new one on here and uh, I'll be done. A new one, I mean, a salvage one because I got a bunch of these and I keep reusing them. So here it is for air spring replacement and then putting it back together. Uh, of course, the assembly is the same is the same thing backwards. So here's a uh, here's one on the uh, D4 on the D4 or the A8. It's also the same on uh, the Bentley Mulsanne and a few other cars. That's the old uh, original bag. So this one is uh, gone. I call them bags because I call them bag here in Europe. Not in Europe, we call them air spring. They are air spring really. And here's the new sensor. Yeah, everything is all up and running. The uh, calibration value seems to make sense, but I'm gonna go and uh, drive it anyways, and then measure all four corners and redo the calibration, make sure everything is up to snuff with everything. Uh, uh, related to the uh, hair suspension and it's gonna drive just like normal just like it should and uh, put back the cap on there so thanks for watching hope it helps you and of course it's uh, more complicated than on a d3 but now you see what it involves and you can do your own choices and if you want to do it yourself or want to buy, uh, buy the uh, uh, buy the whole assembly together which is extremely extremely expensive so thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.